<laughs> well, logically, he might not be. I was, I was reaching. Now, your fan base uh, is huge, wide, but also really diverse, really quite strange in a way. I mean, people really go nuts for you. I think they appreciate you now more than they did previously. Is that the case from your perspective? Do you think yes. that now there's a different... Yes, I do. I don't, I don't think it's simply because I've stayed around long enough. I think people who like me consider me to be quite real. And in pop music, that's very rare. Well, it's getting more and more rare, it seems. Absolutely. It's completely impossible to be natural in pop music. Uh, so I think people just see me as a real person with uh, views. And you're touring here again this year, I guess, are you? Absolutely, yes. When are, you, when are you doing it? I appear in Manchester next weekend. Yeah. Which is the first time in 12 years. It's going to be fantastic, isn't it's, it? I think it sounds as if it's going to be extraordinary. And now, how are you coming on the stage? Because I know you always like to, you like to appear in different dramatic ways, don't you? <laughs> That's not true. Yes, you do. It really I've seen you carried on. <laughs> well, that just happened once, and for some reason it was captured on film. Can I drive you on stage in my bubble car? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, I'll <laughs> see. Wouldn't I, I, it be a lovely thing for you and for me? No, I'm... I'll, I'll make my hair, I'll quiff it up for the occasion. I'm striving for some degree of popularity, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you get one more chance to be friends, and then the offer's withdrawn. <laughs> Um, <laughs> did you see uh, stars in their eyes? Why would I be watching okay. stars? <laughs> well, you've got to do something in the evenings. Yes, but that isn't something that you have. Right. <laughs> Harry Hill, brilliant British comedian, who I know you know is a fan of yours. He's yes. kind of see like, yes. He uttered the immortal words, Tonight, Matthew, <laughs> I shall be Morrissey. <laughs> you didn't see this? No. Would you, would you, would you like to have a little peek? I'd love to. This is a bit of a TV first. <laughs> this is uh, Morrissey watching Harry Hill as Morrissey. I think you're going to be suitably impressed. <laughs> Who are you going to be tonight? Tonight, Matthew. I am going to be Morrissey. Morrissey! But are you, are you, you, you actually did, did not like that, did you? Well, the thing, I haven't been like that for 20 years. Of course not, but he was doing the kind of, you know, the old image, and I suppose it's what they thought would be the more immediate, recognisable face of Morsi to the mums and dads, I guess. But why cater to mums and dads? Well, because that's the show. You know oh, stars in your eyes. I've heard of it, yes. We're friends now, remember? Yes. yes. <laughs> You're going to come round where you are? I might do. I might, yeah, come I, down, I, come I might, round! I might borrow your wallpaper hey, table. <laughs> I've got lambs. Lambs? In the garden, two lambs. For what? Just to, well, not to eat. Don't start on that. <laughs> will they become sheep? No, they, yeah, they will become sheep and they'll be loved and cherished as sheep. Until they, they'll die of old age? Yes. Yeah, you sure? Yes! <laughs> you can come in and ride them if you want. <laughs> so you have lambs, you have sheep. Yeah, that I know. you took in every Sunday to... You see, that that, no, terrible. I don't tuck in every Sunday. A lot of the time I have the vegetarian option. Because it's tastier. Hey, how do you write a song? I don't mean in a, in a quick way, I don't care, but do you, for example, you work on this new album, okay, and this was years in the coming, wasn't it? It was a few years in the coming. Yes. Do you um, stockpile ideas, things that tick you off, or things that you really want to talk about, or things that you've got to do, or is it kind of a more mechanical approach? You think, okay, time to write a song now. No, no, it's, uh, uh, Jonathan, I think you must realise it's, it's never mechanical. It's never mechanical. Um, I'm, uh, I do feel the urge and I, I constantly write and I constantly feel the need to witness and uh, give an account of life. And when you're writing, do you think, okay, here's an idea, here's a concept I want to deal with, or, do you, or just like a couplet coming to your head, like there's some lovely, lovely kind of rhymes and ideas in this. That one about the, the last gang member or the first gang member to die, yeah. and then you've got the, the rhyme with stars and reservoir, which is just such a clever, and you think, now, did that occur to you in advance, or you think, okay, I'm writing this now, oh, well, that's nice. No, it just all falls into place, honestly. It really does. How lucky? Well, yes, it is quite lucky. But you have lots of talent yourself. Huge amount. <laughs> <laughs> we don't smirk after you said it, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're writing your autobiography. I am indeed, yes. Now, how, how far are you into it? How, how's that going? Well, um, I've, I do have a few chapters left. 
Well, what does that mean? Is that a threat of some sort? Or... <laughs> well, it means I have a few chapters that are still open. So you're not deciding to finish it yet, or you're still kind of deciding what to put in them? No, I just haven't had time. And you're settling old scores? M millions. Yeah, but you, you know, you settle old scores in every album that comes out, don't you? It isn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is the one thing that... Yeah, I know you're asking me to be friends, but the one thing that makes me hold back... <laughs> is the fear that I would turn up in an album being, you know, told off a little bit, being rebuked for something, some small slight, some misunderstanding that you've carried with you and you won't get over. And it's only a minor thing like me saying, ride the lamb, you know. <laughs> but it's just, life is a serious business, Jonathan. It really is. You should lighten up. How? Just relax, come out and meet, we'll play tennis. <laughs> so what, next Tuesday good for you? <laughs> what time? Seven o'clock, my place, I'm serving sprouts. You know, sprouts scream when they're... Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Morris is going to perform for us one more time this evening. I'm looking forward to This is going to be something very special, I believe. I don't even know what the beginning... Oh, don't be... It's no, you see, not doing... special, it really. It is special. It's you are it's... special. Do you not feel special? I'll just prove that it's not special. Oh, <laughs> oh actually, you do want me to give the big build-up. Oh, go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy's going to do something extra special for us, uh, so I'm going to say thank you while he limbers up. So let's say thank you to Marcy, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. The one and only Marcy. There is the album. Uh, Marcy, you are the quarry. I tell you, it's just about the best album I've heard all year, no doubt about it. Uh, it's fantastic. So, Morris is going to perform again for us now, but while he limbers up, uh, let me thank the other guests as well. The always wonderful Mr Dale Winton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and the equally delightful Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> Next week, my guests are like a selection of my favourite chocolates. He's hard on the outside and soft in the middle. It's Eddie Izzard. She's dark, nutty and impossible to resist, Carol Vorderman, and he is an upmarket truffle who's smooth and rich. It's Mr Will Young. Plus there'll be mouth-watering music from the fabulous France Ferdinand, but now with a special version of Every Day Is Like Sunday. <laughs> it's Morrissey!